Welcome back, everybody, to the Westlake Hornets Team Builder Dynasty here on NCAA Football 14. As today, the Hornets will return home for some senior day action here in year number 13 of the series, going to be taking on the 3-7 and seven Air Force Falcons. Westlake is currently 8-1, and one, ranked number 6 in the nation. And the Hornets have been dominant these past couple of weeks. Ever since they lost to UCLA, they outscored their opponents 111-27, including a 56-17 victory over Notre Dame and a 55-10 victory last week over Arizona. Let's take a look at these rankings real quick. you got three undefeated teams at the top with Florida, Virginia Tech, and Oklahoma. Texas and UCLA are also ahead of Westlake, so it's certainly going to be a challenge for the rest of the way for the Hornets, but they can certainly do it. As I mentioned earlier, it is senior day. Only six seniors on this entire roster, all of whom are starters. Quarterback Stephen Westwood, offensive tackle Dwayne Morton, defensive end Delvin Hines, the other defensive end Mike Wilson, cornerback Anthony Mitchell, and punter Greg Guillory. The top two seniors on this team, Stephen Westwood and Delvin Hines, out there representing Westlake here for the coin toss as the Hornets, per usual, will choose to start this game on defense. So that means we will get to see the defense out first, who is coming off a really good performance last week against Arizona, only allowing one touchdown and ten points. Here is a handoff for Clark on the first play of the game. Eric Clark loses five. The senior, Mike Wilson, arguably the most improved player on this roster, brings him down. Third and six now. They're going to run it again with Clark. I, I don't really know why. And there's the other senior, Delvin Hines, with the play. Big tuna. Also, Richard Rivers Jr. was there with the tackle. And now here is the offense. Stephen Westwood on the first play of the game will be sacked by Namert Apple, the young defensive end. He was able to get past the true freshman left tackle, Amir Logan, to make the play. Logan has had an outstanding season, but that play he got beat, and Apple will bring down the quarterback. Second and 18, now a five-wide set here for the Hornets, as Stephen West, we're going to scramble to his right. Tough pass, very risky pass, and it is caught by Cassius Troy for a gain of 17. So now it is third and one. It looks like the Hornets will probably try to run it. It's an option pitch, and Westwood does not get it to Isaiah Sparks in time, losing three, wrapped up by Cornelius Ransom. So that will force a Westlake punt and a pair of three and outs here for both of these offenses. Will Air Force get the first first down of the day? The answer is no, as Taylor is hit by guess who, Delvin Hines. Delvin Hines is nearing very close to the all-time sack record in college football history, previously set by former Westlake Hornet Cole Spencer. Here's a nice run there from Stephen Westwood, showing off that dual threat ability as he gets around 17 on the play. Third and five now for Westlake from the 30. Westwood trying to throw another risky pass. This time it is deflected. Tegan Moon was the intended target, so that'll bring out the field goal unit. This is a 47-yarder for Zebediah Phoenix the second. 14 mile an hour wins as this one will doink in. The winds were blowing to the right, and it nearly made Phoenix miss the kick, but it goes off the crossbar and bounces in. And that is how Westlake will get their first points of the day as it's 3 to nothing. Air Force trying to get into a groove as there's a nice first down for the... Falcons, good run as they now have it inside the red zone at around the 18. Second and two, Brigham Taylor looking to throw it, and he will get it to Thompson. Quickly tackled by Anthony Mitchell. Still a nice gain by Calvin Thompson to around the eight-yard line. Second and goal now. Can Air Force take the lead here towards the end of the first quarter? This would certainly be a good way to set the tone in this football game as Taylor. Going to look to throw it. Now going to scramble to his right, and he is in. Untouched like weekend homework. And it looks like Air Force is going to keep this one competitive. No blowout here for the Hornets so far. 7-3. Falcons lead it. And that will do it for the first quarter. Westlake has played incredibly these past couple days. But so far today they have come out flat. Currently down. The defense for the most part has looked good offensively. I can't really say the same. Westlake does not look great on offense in the past two weeks. They've put up 50-plus points in both games. Going to try to start the second quarter off hot, and it looks like they will. 
Isaiah Sparks, the talented running back, will be pushed out inside the 40. Sparks has around 70 carries this season, and he's averaging over 10 yards a carry. I mean, he has truly been a spark, no pun intended, for this offense. Second and 10 now, Westwood going to try to get it to the sophomore, Tegan Moon, who will find the end zone. Moon with his second receiving touchdown in as many weeks. And the Westlake Hornets will now make it 10-7, a huge score for Moon. And it seems like Stephen Westwood and company are starting to get into a little bit of a groove after a slow start. Air Force now has it, third and six for the Falcons. Brigham Taylor under pressure and he is sacked. You know who that is making the play, the star senior, number 93, Delvin Hines with his first of probably multiple sacks today. Knowing him, that'll result in an Air Force punt, and Westlake will get it back here as they try to make this a two-score game here in quarter number two. Third and six for Westlake. They're in borderline field goal range. Just want to officially get in as Westwood will run for about five. Fourth and one, I've got to assume they're going to go for it. I believe that was once again Neymar Apple with the play. Fourth and one, they will go for it. Irving Porter has had a pretty solid day so far. He gets the handoff and will convert. A steady game so far for Irving Porter. Not a whole lot of big plays, but multiple good runs from him. Keith Fleming is now in the game at quarterback. I assume this is a design run for Fleming, and it is. Fleming with a nice play, getting 11. He is pushed out of bounds at around the 20-yard line. Steven Westwood now returns for Westlake as it is second and inches. Hornets getting very close to this end zone as Westwood has open rushing room and will bring it to the one. Unable to quite fight his way in there. And now it's first and goal. All Westlake has to do here is just simply punch it in here with one of their running backs. It's Irving Porter in the backfield here on first down as Porter will find the end zone. For a Westlake touchdown and the Hornets will extend their lead. They're now up by two possessions as it is 17 to 7. Under two minutes to go here in the first half. Let's see what Air Force can do here as they try to make this a one-score game once again. Still a fairly successful first half for the most part. For Air Forces, here is Brigham Taylor getting it to Hopkins, who will keep it inbounds. Good play after the catch by Eddie Hopkins as he gets 14. And the Falcons have it inside midfield now in enemy territory from the 40. 146 to go in the half. Taylor on first down. Going to get it up the middle, back for Hopkins. Poor coverage by guess who, Paul King. We said that a lot this year. Kenya has been one of the few weak spots on this team. Already demoted a couple weeks ago from the number three corner to the number four corner. Third and six now. Taylor up the middle for Clark, and he does not get it. David Harris leaves him with a pounding. Fourth and six now under a minute to go in the half, and Air Force is going to go for it. I mean, yes, they don't have a lot to lose, but they can make it a one-score game with a field goal. Taylor's pass is overthrown, out of bounds, incomplete. And Westlake will get it back now as they try to extend their lead even more, already up by 10. We'll see what they can do here with 40 seconds and a couple timeouts as Westwood. Under pressure, he's going to try to throw it deep, and it's picked off by Hubbard. Cassius Troy was the intended target, and it looked like he underthrew Troy. A good return there on the play by Hubbard before getting slaughtered by Amir Logan. But Air Force's offense has another chance with 21 seconds left. They once again have an opportunity to make this game a little bit closer before halftime. Taylor on third and two, going to keep it himself, and he will get the first down of his legs. A gain of 13 for Brigham Taylor. Now down to 14 seconds. Air Force has to move quickly. They still have a timeout. Taylor. Coleman composed in the pocket. Now he's going to try to run with it again. And a huge tackle by Big Tuna, Richard Rivers Jr. Air Force calls for a final timeout. They're just going to kick the field goal now. This guy kind of has a leg. I mean, that was not a great kick. I guess I see why they went for it earlier on 4th and 6th. Battle in the first half, a fairly close one here on Senior Day. Westlake leads it 17-10. A fairly slow start for Stephen Westwood. He has not played his best football and had a really bad interception towards the later part of the first half. Keith Fleming here in the game to start the second half as Fleming will fumble it. That was Neymar Apple with the force and it's picked up by Sullivan. That ball was clean out too. It looked like Westlake was trying to go for a wide receiver screen. Fleming was hoping that 
the defensive lineman would be distracted by wherever the offensive lineman would go and he'd have space to work with. That certainly did not work at all. And now uh, Air Force has it back. One of the few times this season that the design plays for Keith Fleming have totally fallen flat on Westlake's face. Nice sack there on second down by Delvin Hines, his second of the game. Third and 17 now. Hopkins with the catch. And he is pushed out after gaining 16. Fourth and inches. I have to imagine Air Force is going to go for it on this play. There's no reason for them not to. And yeah, they will. Clark with the handoff. And Eric Clark will convert only gets three. But that's more than enough as Air Force is moving it. Third and eight. Now they're going to run it again with Clark. I'm not really sure why. And he does not get anything. Ronald Benson with the hit. So the field goal unit will return to make it a four-point game here with four and a half minutes to go in the third. The kick is good, and it is 17-13, to 13, a lot closer than it should be. The offense has to pick it up. They've already turned it over twice, and, well, they're going to start the drive with a sack. Cornelius Ramson is the one who brings him down. you got to give credit to this Air Force front seven. They've really played well today. Westlake's offense needs to big play, try to get back in the swing of things, and maybe this is it. McBride cuts past for safety, and he's gone. A 68-yard touchdown for Dale McBride, and it is now 24-13. McBride had a 90-yard touchdown last week against Arizona. Today, a 68-yarder, not too much worse. And the Hornets are back up by two possessions. 24-13, not an ideal start to the drive for Air Force as Brigham Taylor is sacked by the linebacker Ronald Benson. Benson's had an up and down season, but he has played really well these past couple of weeks. Second and 14 now, man in motion for the Falcons. About three minutes to go in the quarter as Clark loses four. Big tuna, Richard Rivers Jr. with the play. That would force a punt. Westlake's offense has it back here late in the third, trying to extend their lead. Second and four, Westwood under a little bit of pressure. He gets it to his younger brother, Carter Westwood. That's Carter's first catch of the game. He has been really quiet today. I mean, Westlake's pass game has not been all that good today. And the main receivers, I would say, have been Tegan Moon and Dale McBride. Usually it's Cassius Troy and um, Carter Westwood, but not today. Speaking of Tegan Moon, he makes another nice catch there as the Hornets have it inside the 10-yard line. Under a minute to go in the quarter. Five wide set here. Westwood alone in the backfield on second and five. As he will connect. Carter Westwood with his 11th receiving touchdown of the year. That ties a career high. He set as a freshman. Only six last year. And now this year is up at 11. If Westwood declares for the draft this year, which he should, some lucky team will be getting a stud receiver. Here is Brigham Taylor now in the Air Force offense trying to stay competitive. He gets a nice run of about 21 yards. Third and inches now. Probably the final play of the third quarter. Taylor looking to throw it under some pressure, and he does not get it. Mike Wilson, the senior, brings him down. That'll do it for quarter number three. Westlake leads it 31-13. The Hornets are on a nice little groove on both sides of the ball these past couple of possessions. Fourth and inches. Air Force obviously going to go for it. As Brigham Taylor going to try to run it, and again, he is successful. He does get hit very hard by, it looks like Paul King, I think. But a first down nonetheless for Air Force. Second and ten, now a screen for Eric Clark. Gets some blocks, and he is going to be pushed down inside the 20 by Kevin Blanchard. All right, I know the video looks weird here on this play. It's just for this one. The clip totally messed up. As on third down, hey, you get a new angle of it. As the pass is picked off by David Harris, he makes an excellent play, cutting in front of the receiver and forcing the turnover. Brigham Taylor's been efficient today. That was a pretty bad pass. Harris covered him nicely and made a really nice play to get the ball. As you can see, the video looks normal. It will be normal for the rest of today, as here is Carter Westwood. He has had a pretty busy se second half. Did not get a catch in the first half, but three receptions here in half number two. Now third and three. Isaiah Sparks with the handoff, and he does not get it. Only getting around two yards as it would lead to a fourth and one with about four minutes to go. And Westlake is saying, screw it. Might as well go for it. Delayed handoff for Sparks, and the defensive tackle will swallow him up for a loss of four. 
Very rarely do we see negative runs from Isaiah Sparks, but that is one of those rare instances, and Air Force gets the pigskin back with 3.42 to play. Brigham Taylor is going to be sacked on first down by Delvin Hines, who I believe is now two sacks away from tying the all-time record set by former Wesley Hornet Cole Spencer. Fourth and ten now. Hines misses the sack, and the pass is complete to Alvin Reyes for a gain of 23. A very lucky conversion there for Air Force, and Delvin Hines will make up for his missed sack as he brings down the quarterback there for his fourth sack of the game. Now one away from tying Cole Spencer's mark. I believe Spencer had 57 career sacks, and Hines is currently at 56. Another fourth and inches here after a nice play by the linebacker David Harris. Three for five on fourth down today. Air Force has gone for it a lot to say the least. Now it'll be three for six as the pass is incomplete. And that is how this game ends. An ugly win for Westlake, but a win nonetheless. 31 to 13 on senior day. The offense was not all that good. Irving Porter had a good game. And other than that, nobody really jumped out on offense. Defensively, the defense is really playing good football. The pass rush was great. Delvin Hines is a friggin' animal. So that'll end the episode next week. The Hornets head out to Tempe to take on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Should be a fun one. I'm out. Deuces.